Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. So, good morning. Welcome to this training workshop on going digital. Now, on the Facebook page, one of the things that I said about this it was going to be about how to make a profitable product. I've actually added a little bit to that, if that's okay. And it's all about being a complete A to Z blueprint of creating, for many of you, if not all of you, your first profitable online course or product. Now, when we're looking at digital products, they, they, it's anything. It could be an ebook, it could be a, a full blown course. Whatever it is, that course is, a, is uh, in designed to make you some money. Now, one of the biggest problems, well, uh, is how, how do you make money out of doing your online courses? Not make it, make it is actually easy. Okay, so if you haven't yet gone there, please, on your device, whatever device you're using, go to this address, pz.tt forward slash end to end. You should be able to log in on any browser. Now, I don't know that for sure at this moment, but you should be able to log in on any browser. When you are there, you can log in. If you want to save your notes, you'll need to log in but you only ever need to log in once. Just so that you're saved, okay? And what we're going to be able to do is look at ways in which you can keep your notes on your own device. So it's paperless, and I know somebody is desperately going to write on that piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> But the modern classroom, if you're running live workshops, digitizing is not just about being um, online, on the web. Digitizing is about making your workshops, your speaking engagements, interactive. If you've got 3,000 people in your auditorium and you're speaking really well, that's fabulous because you're probably earning lots and lots of money. I hope you are. But what are those people at the back doing? Are they paying attention? Are they sleeping? If they ask a question, how do they ask a question? And very often you'll go, and any question, that's a very good point. And everyone else is going, what on earth did they say? The whole point of this is that you can very easily have all the questions come through, either as a moderator or onto your screen in front of you so you can see things. So there's lots of ways that we can look at what is digitizing our products. And I'm, I'm not going to restrict where we go with this at this point. So once you're there, you're, you're logging in. This is just a short video to show you where things are on the present form area. Uh, you are presented with this once you get into the end-to-end -end, uh, going digital, uh, slightly different change name. You click on the play button and it will take you to this type of screen, okay? The slides themselves may have changed but throughout this, you can move yourself across. You've got a little arrow to move it. I, for many of you, swipe it. You can take notes by clicking on that. And it will uh, bring up a note area for you to, to write your notes. And then once you've written your note, at the end of your presentation, at the end of the event, I will automatically send you an email. And you can download your own notes. And what you'll find is it's just like PowerPoint printout handouts. It's the slide and your notes against each slide. And any questions they have asked and any discussion they have had. Okay, so it, it becomes a very nice little handout that people download after the event. So play with it. It's, it's something new to get used to. It's reasonably easy to use this particular one. I looked on Sunday, whilst I was waiting for these guys to set me up, at 14 different ways of beaming your presentation to people's devices. And they've got some strengths and they've got some weaknesses. Some are very good at polling. This is the, the thing, so I could ask you a question such as this. And it would automatically go into a poll that you use on your mobile device and you choose A, B, C, or D, and we could have an interactive graph. Very, very clever, especially for speakers. Brilliant thing for speakers. But what about 
normal situations. You know, how, how would you normally do this? Well, we'd say, okay, how experienced are you? And you'd ask for answers. In a relatively small workshop, that's easy. But when your audience is several thousand miles away, how do you get responses? And this is where we're looking at how do we expand our markets. So I've got a question for you, and what I'd like you to do is just open up the present discuss area. It's a discussion to, icon. It's trying to look in curiously yeah. in the last five minutes. Oh, oh, we may we may have a overload on on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah? The password. There's lots of capitals and data. So let's be good. That's a very wide hat. Go to discuss. Discuss. And give me your answer. How experienced are you in creating and selling digital products? Are there any four? A, none. B, some, you've played around with it, you've tried it perhaps. C, quite a bit, but you've yet to make any real money from it. Or D, you're an internet marketing guru. Now, Ethan, who will be joining us very shortly, is an internet marketing guru. He's just not very good at turning up live in time. This is the box that says discuss going digital. Yep, just, just put your answer. And it's just one way because what, you're, what you would see if you were looking at my moderator screen here is I'm actually seeing that James has said A, he's, he's, a, he's got no experience. That uh, John has said B, some virtual facilitation. You can be as, as, as full as you like with this type of interaction. Does this make sense? So what I've got now is I've got a stream of, of answers here. So long as I can keep my eye on it, things are beginning to happen. And I can pick on any individual and look at James. Well, tell me, you've had some experience. What, what experience have you had? Um, it's actually more in the corporate world okay. uh, for in-house digital programs rather than selling it as a product. Great. <coughs> so that, that's simply an example, not, not just a his, his genuine answer, but how you can use a digitalization of your live product in order to get more interaction and hopefully more learning. How to do cost? We'll come, come back to the cost and everything else later. Because it depends. But you, you're very welcome to post that question in the, in the system. Okay, some different areas of experience, but nobody so far, apart from Ethan, when we come, is making money out of digital products. Is that true? Mm. And he's a pain in the butt trying to make money out of it. It's actually very, very easy to make them, especially now. When I first started on doing what we were then calling e-learning instead of digital products or information products, we had bulletin board systems. How many of you remember bulletin boards? <laughs> a few of us. Okay. So uh, I was actually using the ARPANET, and my very first e-learning course was for Strangeways Prison in Manchester. Now, it was all sponsored by the government uh, in the UK at the time, because of course prisoners in Strangeways, they're very violent prisoners, and it was after the riots, for anybody who remembers the riots in Manchester. Um, what happened was that they wanted to educate the prisoners, but they didn't want the teachers going into the prison. So we set up this bulletin board, it was the first of its kind in the UK, to teach prisoners through a bulletin board system. And you needed to some, somehow get interaction with people that you weren't in front of. We couldn't see them in those days, didn't have video. It was all based on text, on boards. So it was, it was a challenge for us to be able to do it. Now it's, it's easy. So what I want to cover, why you do need this third prompt, and it's a third prompt to your business strategy, and then I'm gonna be talking about starting with sales. We need to start with sales, not with the tech. I'll talk about launching a give them what they want campaign. I understand that. 
talk about what's in the box and how to stop wasting your effort. I have had, got, had 28 years of doing this. I have played with almost every piece of tech out there. I like playing with tech. I've tried them. I've spent a vast fortune on them and failed many more times than I've succeeded. So, what I can share is how to stop wasting effort, how you can keep uh, making things uh, interactive. And I'll talk about what's next, where do you go from here? Because today we can't cover everything. James on the Facebook group asked, asked about 300 things he wanted to know. No, we're not covering them all, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot possibly cover them all. Well, so, let's um, just take a little side loop because one of the things I teach a great deal is about business and finance, how, how people make money, particularly small businesses. So we've got a little chart here, and what I'd like you to think about, this is fixed costs, and it goes from low at the top to high at the bottom, and contribution or your sales margin, your profit margin on what you sell, your revenue minus cost of sales from low to high. So if we have a business that has very high fixed costs, lots of cost involved in setting it up, building it, and very low contribution, we have something that is known as a disaster. Okay? So, and so there have become possibly be any companies that are a disaster, or any company that ever had the word British in it. British Leyland. Very high fixed cost, very low contribution, terrible cars as well. <laughs> British rail, very high infrastructure cost, very low margins. British airways, very, very high fixed cost, very low margins. We don't want this type of business. And I have met so many trainers and coaches who set up beautiful offices in downtown Singapore, or downtown New York, or downtown London, and they've got ornate places, and they've got huge training facilities, and they've got very high fixed costs in a very tight market. And the big problem when you load up your fixed costs with lots of staff, and it's lovely to have this big training empire, is that it costs you more money. Okay? And if, if you've got difficult economic situation, it becomes even more difficult. So what we really want to be is this ideal, very high contribution, very high sales margin, very, very low fixed cost. And the best and ideal business in the world is the oldest profession in the world, which is consulting. <laughs> now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> filthy mind. So you call, you call this name? Consulting <laughs> is... is very low fixed cost. You do not need an office to be a consultant. You don't even need a website. You just need, in the old days you needed a phone number, what was it, and a business card. I'm a consultant, therefore I can go and do what? And you charge high prices, and what's the cost to you? What's the cost to you? So your hours, your time, your knowledge. See, I sell my knowledge and my time because nobody would buy my body. Right? So what we have is how do we move our business away from disaster towards ideal? How do we reduce our fixed costs? How do we increase our margins? And it's a huge problem for training and coaching companies. You sell time. Right now, what you are doing is selling your hours, your knowledge, your skills in particular areas, some of you using a license, some of you your own product, whatever it is. It's either consulting and coaching, what I call consulting coaching, which is one to one or one to a few. Small groups, very small group. High ticket, high prices, comparatively, but completely and utterly limited to the time you have available. I cannot sell this hour that I've just used to somebody else at the same time as I'm using it when I'm doing it live. Training speaking is where I separate you know, the consulting, coaching, training, speaking. Training, speaking is one to few to one to very many. If you become a really great speaker, you can be speaking to thousands at any one time and earning 
for a day quite a lot of money because you're selling an hour. But what about the travel? What about the uh, personal assistance or virtual assistance that you need in order to keep your business running? The downside of this is very, very cheap competition. Now, I was doing a lot of work in Malaysia of, uh, 10, 15 years ago, and it was terrific because I was a British company, officially, and every time I went over there, they were paying British prices. They weren't paying Singaporean ones. But then the competition starts coming in. In Malaysia, they retire at 55, these HR people, and what do they do? They go and set up a consulting company that goes and runs training. I was competing with people who were charging 100 ringgit a day. <laughs> I can't even afford to drive from Singapore to KL to run a training for that sort of money. Now, because you've got so much cheap competition, and all of these corporate refugees, and many of you are corporate refugees, coming up, setting up a training company because I've got some knowledge, we're all competing. And it becomes difficult. But you're also limited to the time you have available. So you can be earning more money here, but very often your fixed costs go up or your travelling costs go up. Not just travel in terms of money, cost of flying, but travel in terms of time that you're not. So if we see coaching consulting as being sort of mid-margin, I mean, it can be anywhere along this continuum. You don't need big offices. You don't need to spend a great deal of money on staff and so on. Small numbers, maybe one-man bands or two, three people in the, in the organization. Training speaking tends to be you've got a little more fixed cost. Either you've, you've, you're renting facilities or you're employing staff because you need more staff and perhaps more trainers. So you're increasing that. Maybe you're increasing your margin. Maybe it's much lower. It depends what market you're in. It's a tough market. They're not disastrous companies. Hey, if they were disastrous, none of us would do it. We must all be making something out of it. But there are years and there are months when, like me, you're down here, aren't you? Your costs are very high. I've had years, if you remember SARS, Huge cost. I had a big training facility in those days, lots of money, lots of advertising, everything else. And what happens is nobody turned up. No, it wasn't even making any, any margin. So what do you do in those situations? We've well, got to keep moving over here. So what do we want to do? You want to clone yourself. That's the ideal. But you can't. You can employ other staff, but are they going to be as good as you? You need that third prompt. So if you've got a business that does a little bit of coaching consulting because it's high ticket and you enjoy it, some training, some speaking, what we want to add is products. Leverage the knowledge and get rid of selling hours. One to many globally. The competition is vast. Just look on the internet and search on Amazon for leadership books three and a half million titles. So you're limited to your market. You, it's wherever your market is. You've got to choose your market. But when you've got all three prongs, you can ride out the economic storms if you plan it right and you start with sales. So what we're looking at is products, especially digital products, are even better than consulting. How much does it cost to distribute my ebooks? Zero. A PDF costs nothing. It's, it's almost so small in terms of the cost of moving a PDF across the internet. We, we don't even count it anymore. Okay? So, that cost of delivering that product is actually very low. You can spend money. Believe me, you can spend money. I'm sure this, this particular unit here costs a fair bit of money. So you can spend money, but it's nothing like spending on a huge training facility or lots of stuff. So how do we move to the ideal? How do we keep things moving in this way? Because when you've got that, that enables you to make much higher margins if people buy it. 
And this is just my interpretation, where things are. What sort of things have we got? Pub the traditional route is publishing. So most speakers have a book. Now, if you write a book in order to make money, that is a big mistake. You won't. Unless you're really, really, really good. It just happens to get picked up. You might make a few dollars, but you won't make thousands. Okay? In fact, most traditional publishing now, if you go out and publish, you will spend more promoting your own book in order to sell a few thousand copies. But what a book is very good for is to help you sell more time. It's a marketing money. But to make money, forget it. You can self-publish. That makes uh, a better margin for you because publishing is 25 to 40 percent. Depends on your publishing, if you find one. Self-publish, we do it tomorrow. Ebooks, even cheaper, even easier. Don't even have to worry about pagination or formatting. In fact, please don't worry about formatting. It's all text. It's very easy. Webinars. This is a big thing right now, but people are spending money on webinars. If you use something like GoToWebinar, it's quite a pricey solution. Okay, and there are hundreds of them. online coaching. Again, you're investing. You've got to at least to have a, a camera and a decent webinar type system, video conference. But you can use Skype and so on, and you can sell it as much, if not more, than you sell your life coaching. You don't need to travel. It's completely wonderful. I know people who will travel uh, several thousand miles for two, three coaching engagements on a day and fly back, and it's madness. Complete madness. Why is it mad? Because it, you're wasting that time <coughs> on the flight. Why are we paying for airlines and hotels when we don't need to? That's the argument that we've had for meetings and virtual meetings forever. John, have you used online coaching for skilling, or is it <coughs> coaching for men? You know, you can you can use. Um, I don't, but uh, you know, unless you call leadership skill. Uh, they, are, they are competencies. You can use coaching uh, online for skill-based. It's a case of how do you do it? Yeah, how how right. do you demonstrate? Yeah. How do you get people to yeah. Yes, you can. So you, you, okay. The reason I'm asking is if you, have you experimented with any platform and what works best for skilling? Okay, you, let's, we, if we can talk about platforms towards the end, because sure. that's going to go sure, sure, sure. so many different ways, probably you know, 12 different ways today. Everybody's going to look at something slightly different. Uh, online courses, yes, there's investment, but big margins are possible. And you're no longer selling your time. Because even online coaching is still selling time. Online courses, you can be doing by selling your time, doing live webinars, or it could be video, and it's, it's ever, what we call evergreen. So what we want is, well, where do we want to go? Well, everyone wants to do courses. So there are now, I believe, two to 3,000 platforms to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> when I started this, there was none. OK, why? What, do, you know, are you, can you possibly make money? And we're going to do a little exercise now. This, uh, this is based, and these are very conservative numbers, by the way. Okay? Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about how much you can make out of internet marketing when you've got a list of people, okay? is that they'll say, well, you, once you've got a list, an email list, you should be able to convert 2 to 5% of your list. Okay? Yeah? Um, no. <laughs> opens a new window, that's fine. Your, your, back, back, your back button, whatever your back button is. So what you've got is going digital income projections here, 
and I've, I've just started down on the bottom left. This is the, the tra traditional publishing market. You've, you write a book. Massive, massive, massive market. Somewhere around 5 million people is your addressable market for a book. If you go on Amazon, whatever you're writing about, there's about 5 million people who might be interested in buying your book. But how much do you make? Well, on average, a book uh, on the traditional publishing is less than $4 per copy. So you've got to sell quite a few copies before you make some money. Okay? It's not as bad as George Michael with Sony making 50 cents per album, but it's still low. So what I've looked at are three areas. Con very conservative income in the blue at 0.1%. That is 0.1%, one-tenth of 1% 1 of the addressable market. Realistic is round about 0.4%. You could get to that. And optimistic will be 1.2%. Now, so in selling a book, yes, you could make $200,000 a year. Pretty good, yeah? It's, it's a major bestseller at this point. How do you get to be a bestseller and how do you get onto the New York Times bestseller list? Do you know the answer? You buy half a million books. <laughs> <laughs> the day it's launched. You buy. Or you actually get somebody else to buy. Right? It's how publishers do it. If you self-publish, that's the only way of doing it. You buy the books. Of course, you're giving them away for the rest of the time. But that's how you get on bestseller lists. Um, the next is, is a you know e-book e type of thing or a, a small course. Now, I sell one of my books, $87. It's a fairly normal price. If I sell a book, I'm stuck at $15, $20. I sell a PDF, I can sell it for $87. Why? People will buy it. So long as it's something that helps them. It's a very big market, maybe 300,000 people addressable for you. Okay? 300,000 people, Singapore, Malaysia, and so on and so forth. $87 for a PDF? Uh, for a PDF, yeah. Absolutely. Why would you pay more for a PDF than your book? That's a complete other question. <laughs> it's all about neuroscience and psychology. People will. People are buying eighty-seven, paying eighty-seven dollars for a a guide. A guide. It's very practical, but it's got to be something that is useful for them. Uh, a, an example would be. Um, if you haven't come across him, Sean D'Souza, psychotactics.com. Um, I'll, I'll make sure you've got all of the links later. Uh, Sean has a book called The Brain Audit that he sells for $15 on Amazon. He sells it on his own website for $79. Why do people buy it? You add some value to it. You add an audio recording of you reading it, for example, and so on and so forth. You just keep adding bonuses and adding value. Uh, a two hundred and ninety seven type dollar course might be you know a four part or a five part video type course big market maybe a hundred thousand people you can sell it for just short of three hundred three hundred dollars um, conservatively you'll make twenty nine thousand every year still good money yeah optimistically three hundred and fifty thousand the realistic far more around a hundred thousand dollars for a course. Bear in mind, all of these have got to be bought, not just put a price on and created. Right the way through, at the very, very top end of the market, you can sell at around about $22,000 for a principally digital online product. Tiny market. Very, very small market size, maybe 2,000 people are addressable. But if you get a realistic number of people converting out of that 200,000, uh, of that 2,000 people, you could be looking at just shy of $200,000 a year. Realistically. Optimistically, which is where all the internet marketing people will tell you, right, you can make 500,000. And there are people that make half a million dollars from courses online in a year. So they're not just pie in the sky numbers, these are based on people's experiences, okay? especially 
So how much could you make? If you go to, on the present screen, if I can uh, show you, go to the resources, we have on here M03, it's a worksheet on the income projections. Oh, sorry. If you open that on the link, there is, it goes to Evernote, but there's a, a downloadable Excel file. And you just download the file, and if you've got Excel or an editable uh, worksheet thing on your uh, computer or tablet, you'll be able to edit it. Okay? Again, you'll be able to download this later and actually just put your own numbers in. What I'd like to do for now is just look at this as a, as a means of how, how much money can you make. All you do with this is you just change your own numbers. What's the addressable market for you? What sort of product, what type of target market are you looking at? Are you looking at maybe you could sell to 100 people? Maybe you could sell it for $47. Well, if you do that, the chances are you'll make $50 out of it if you're selling that. So look at the size of your market. The bigger your list, your email list, the better. The bigger your target market that you can address directly, the better. So how many people, let's have a quick check, how many of you have an email list? i.e. people who sign up for very few. Okay. Advice number one, hard earned advice number one, get an email list today. Right? Just start getting email addresses. They are your market. They are your perfect ideal market. Everyone here is on Facebook, yes? How many friends do you have? <laughs> Thousands? Hundreds? Oh, less than a hundred. Less than a hundred. Thousands. How many connections do you have on Facebook? <laughs> Probably a lot. Okay. What about LinkedIn? 11,000. 11,000? That's huge. That is a beautiful market. What about Twitter? Anyone still using Twitter apart from Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> How many people on Twitter? Yeah. yeah? They're all of these, th these are your addressable market because you've got connections to them. Now, you say, well, our day, uh, Twitter is, is dead. Well, it was, but it's been revived. And you just need to get in front of enough eyeballs with the right offer. Okay? And I'll ask Ethan uh, a little bit later because I know he's been very successful with this. Okay? In terms of addressing a social media type market. But social media is not the only way. There are what we used to call friends. <laughs> you know, you used to go down the pub or the coffee shop and actually just go and meet and talk. They're your addressable market as well. They may not be the people you're selling to, but they know people who do. So you've got to look at how do you network? How do you actually build this up? You, could, you can network and sell digital products in a, in a normal networking meeting. Okay. It's just a case of going to the right way. So open up the um, spreadsheet, and if you can, just put the numbers in. Don't worry about being conservative at this point, because this is going to do it for you. 0.4% is conservative. 0.1% is definitely conservative. What is the real addressable? How many, how many people could you send a message to today that you've got a new product? They don't have to be qualified. Right? Don't have to be qualified at this moment, but they're roughly, if you've connected with them, they're roughly the sort of people you're going to want to work with anyway. So CRM lists are okay with them? CRM, yeah, your CRM is, is, is it, that's people you're connected with. It's whoever you can address right now. Just put that number in. And what sort of product are you going to be selling? Are you going to be selling a high ticket product? Are you going to be selling a cheap product? Product. Are you going to sell a book to them, $15, $20? You may as well, if you think you'd write a book, I know you are, Avi, put $20 in there and see how little money you're going to make out of the book. Because you will make very little money out of selling a book. What you can do is you just give that book to the right person, and boy, that could be worth several hundred thousand dollars. 
They're your numbers. Could you Does anyone want to give me their numbers? Because I'll, I'll just do it on here. I'm, I'm not beaming this bit. Addressable market size? Mm -hmm. A thousand. A thousand people. And selling at what, what sort of selling price? Three fifty. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Would be uh, three hundred and fifty dollars to four thousand two hundred dollars. Now, the reason I want you to do that is recognise particularly your market size and your pricing. When you've only got when you've got a very small market and a very low, comparatively low price, you're not going to make much money out of it. Is it worth doing? That's the question you need to ask. And we need to be realistic. Even when we take the optimistic number there of 4,200, is it worth doing? Now, a $350 product when you're selling it, it takes quite a lot of work, actually. There's a lot that goes into that. More than a day. My other number is 5,000. Okay, 5,000 people? No, 1,000 people, 5,000 price. Ah, right. Different type of product, obviously, and that's $60,000. Now, is that worth doing? Sounds better. Yeah, that's, right, we're beginning to get this. You either have a, if you have a very tight, small market, you know it's going to be small. You need high ticket rating, simple as that. If you end up converting more of your list, hey, great. But don't expect it, not at your first attempt. Second, third, fourth, yeah. When you've got a reputation, it's like uh, John C. Maxwell can launch anything now, and it will be a bestseller. He's got the reputation, but he's also got 75, 80 books out there. Okay? So when you're doing this and you're doing it on a repeated basis, iterate to awesome. You can make substantial earnings from it okay? and make a substantial difference in the market. Cool. Okay, so we've got a means, uh, and you, you can just play with this on your own. Realistically understanding how much you can make. Now, if you do this sensibly and you can work out that yes, you can make some decent money out of this, why should you add digital products? Well, the biggest thing is it removes the constraint of you selling time. It either removes it or it mitigates it. Time is something you don't have a great deal of. You can easily reach a much wider, possibly global audience. The interweb is a gateway to the market. You can work anywhere, and I do mean anywhere, as long as you've got an internet connection. I was uh, running one of my coaching programs. I had eight people on there, and I was on the beach in Vietnam. Thank you very much. Uh, three weeks ago, I was on a farm in North Chiang Mai. Beautiful place, right in the mountains, but they had Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I did a few coaching sessions. You can do it. I built some of my product there. You have the potential to earn five, six, or seven figures more than you're currently earning. Now don't get swayed too easily and say seven figures. I know it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay. We can create. You can have the best product in the world, but nobody buys it. And if nobody buys it, you make nothing. Okay. So there are, are is potential here, but you've got to do it the right way. So, what's your product going to do? Let's have a little idea of what your product is going to be. And I've got a worksheet for you if you uh, load that up from the resources section. EN worksheet M01, product category. It's on Evernote for those of you who use Evernote. And it's also a PDF down at the bottom of the Evernote. So with the Evernote, you just save it to your own account and then you can edit it much easier. Or the PDF, uh, you're, you may be able to annotate the PDF. Of course, you'll get all of these later as well. 
just as an aside, I, I was talking to the guys at Present the other day and suggested that they include a worksheet function in their software, which they're going to do in the next 10 days. So you would just bring it up on, on your own screen and you fill in your form <coughs> and it saves it for you. So it's a little bit of a, a functionality that can help. So open up the worksheet. And what we're looking at with the worksheet is what is your product category? It's, it's what, what is the format of your product? Are you doing it live? Are you doing video? Are you doing audio? Are you doing a, a mini course, an online course? Is it a blended course? What is it? How are you going to do it? What is the transformation? What is going to happen for the user? What are they going to be able to do? What are they going to be able to achieve? What are they going to be able to understand? What are they going to be able to earn? It's all about them and their transformation. It's not about you. It's not about what they need. It's what you are going to give them. What are they going to get? And then you just put in, well, where's my target? Well, I know what a micro niche here. The smaller your niche, the better. Now, I know this sort of contradicts that, well, how big is my list and how, many, how big is the addressable market? The smaller you make your niche target, the more you will sell. You've got to be so tight. So you say, well, I want to address coaches and trainers. How, how many people is that in the world these days? 68 million. 68 million. Well, huge market size. 16. Yeah. Okay, let's narrow it down. Coaches and trainers who don't have internet products. Well, that reduces, that takes all of them. One million away. One, three million. Then you just choose, okay, in what area? What type of trainer? What type of coach? Do you want to be working with health coaches, fitness coaches, spiritual coaches? Whatever it is, you just go narrower and narrower. What if you wanted to do a relationship product? I want to focus on women over 40. Where? Okay. Well, divorced women over 40 in Singapore. It becomes narrower and narrower. So if yeah, that reduces the number of people who will buy my product, no, it doesn't. It doesn't actually. It just says, these are the people that you want to say yes. You will attract other people. The more narrow you make your niche, the more interest you will derive from people who are just not quite there. So is this for me? Because they don't want to be excluded but they recognize something of themselves in your description, whatever that niche is. So you want to be as tight as you possibly can with your niche. And what I want to be absolutely crystal clear with here is that nobody, but nobody buys what you are offering. Embed this in your brain. Nobody buys what you're offering. They buy the transformation it brings them. There is absolutely no point in trying to sell something as it's the best thing ever. If it brings me no transformation, what am I going to buy? So when you open this worksheet, it will just give you an idea. Okay, what you want to do, how are you going to deliver it? For how many at a time, one to one, one to few, group, small group, large group, thousands, millions, whatever it is. What type of product? 
What does it allow them to do, or be, or feel, or have, or overcome, or achieve? For now, just answer one of them. It doesn't open. No, it won't on that. You have to open from resources. Go to resources and then open that. M01. Product pattern. Okay. If you can't uh, annotate on yours, then what I suggest is you do it either as a discussion or as a question or notes on the present. So, and um, for what micro niche? So, it's just I've only got mega niches here. Okay, mega niches. Is it in health and health and beauty, love and relationships, business, career, and money, personal development, or other? My recommendation, if you can, is keep out of other. If you choose health and beauty, bigger market, much easier to sell. <laughs> you notice slimming centres. Why do they keep appearing? Skin centers, why do they keep appearing? It's easy to sell. Love and relationships, much easier to sell. Business, career, and money, you'd think would be the easiest to sell. No, it's not. It's more difficult to sell. Especially business. Um, personal development, such as leadership development, something I learned. I mean, I am a leadership trainer. This is what I do most of the time, a tech leadership trainer. And why is it so difficult to sell leadership training? Because, especially in Singapore, have you noticed how everybody is already a very good leader? Yes. It's a bit like driving. I, I, I'm asking you to do an advanced driving course. I don't need an advanced driving course. I'm a perfectly good driver. I'm the best driver that I know. Right? Leadership is the same, especially here. Everyone thinks they learned their leadership in primary school or in the army or whatever it was. Very difficult to sell soft skills. Harder skills, finance, much easier compared to leadership. So when you sell leadership, you've got to sell something tangible. You've got to sell a transformation. What does it do for me? It makes you a better leader. So what? So what? It's not my problem. My leadership is not the problem. It's him. It's him. He needs leadership. He needs leadership. Not me. He needs boss it's training. You should be talking to my boss, not, not me. Okay? So see if you can help. can you can you turn your leadership into something about health? <coughs> yeah you can. Less stress. Longer life. No heart attacks. You know? Well being and productivity through healthy behaviours. And tangible results from it. Uh, beauty, yeah, I, lots of people are doing this. How do you present? And they talk about how you dress. Love and relationships always sells very well. So look at where you are in the mega niche and then go down and down and down until you've got the smallest micro niche you can think of. And then, what is their name? Are they male, female, and so on and so forth? Think about that. Again, getting down to as much detail as you can. And then your product category is simply the combination. How you deliver it, what is it, what's the transformation, for whom? It is the, your problem, the, the solution problem is what does this pro, uh, product allow you to do? Overcome, achieve. It's your problem and solution in one. For whom? Target market. What is it? It's a coaching program, it's a one to one, it's a live, it's. It's just enough to say, yeah, I, I'll do an online program, or I'd rather do a live coaching, I'd li rather do a workshop. M01. 
Does this change? Uh, you can change it in the next five minutes. It's entirely up to you. This is going to evolve. Okay? This is not going to be static. This is your first stab at saying this is the product category I'm aiming for. In a week, you might have completely changed your mind. That's fine. No problem with that. That might be another product as well. After a month of thinking about this, you could have 10 different products you could be thinking about. You just choose the most profitable. Get as specific as possible with your micro niche. That will take you a little time unless you already know who your target market is. So for my leadership training, my focus is tech leaders, IT leaders. <coughs> Why? I like working with nerds and geeks. I am a nerd and geek. Okay? That's what I do. I am that bridge between them and the business. I understand both worlds. So I've said IT leadership. And last year, if you noticed on my LinkedIn profile, I finally had the balls to say, I'm an IT leadership coach and trainer. That's what I do. The moment I did that, I had a phone call from my one of my existing clients. Says, Does that mean you're not going to work with us anymore? Of course it doesn't. They were more keen to be working with me because, and it wasn't, they're not IT. You just have to believe in yourself that hey, that's what you do. And the moment you pigeonhole yourself and say, that's what I do, the people that are just outside that, they'll start calling you. Don't worry about it. They will call you. And it is a very, very frightening thing to do, to actually say, right, I am going to narrow, 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 narrow. Because you think the market's getting smaller. No, it just means you focus more attention on a more important one. And other people are still interested. Does that make sense? The day you change your, your profile, particularly on LinkedIn, to actually include your target market, and it's a very small micro niche, it will be a, you'll, you'll be having a very brave day there. Because you're about to inform your entire uh, network <coughs> of specialists. Why? Actually, everybody wants to work with a specialist, even when that specialist is in the wrong field. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. But we're all like that. That's our bias. That's the way we work here as human beings. I really like the idea of taking something like, right, say, for. Um, Personal development, the giving a help or a relationship twist. Oh yeah, that, that's really neat. And, and particularly, if you go into the other, you honestly just lift it. Some get higher up this list. It's just easier to say. Okay. Personal development, which honestly is where most of us really live. True. You've got to lift it up because it, it, there's too much competition. It's really, you, know, you, you guys are a little bit of a pain in the butt to me because you compete with me. Now, the problem is, is when, you, when we have competition like this, well, actually, it's pretty decent competition. I don't mind losing to you. I don't mind losing to things that you do. I don't mind losing to you. But, you know, we don't really mind, but it's a bit annoying that it happens a lot. Right? And then, and we are a small group of like-minded people here, yeah? So when you look at the bigger picture, you start saying collaboration, we've all got our rice bowl to fill, okay? And that's where we need to be looking at, is how can we differentiate ourselves from each other? And it won't exclude other people. It just means get it up that list. Get a beauty angle, oh! How much money do people spend on beauty treatments? It's a vast amount of money. 
You promise somebody that they're going to look better. Oh. You know, having lost 19 kilos now, I could sell a dieting product. Would it work? <laughs> Absolutely. I can sell a, sell a quit smoking product. Because I've quit smoking. I can sell a how do you survive a heart attack product. Because I've done it. Would it sell? Absolutely. Do I want to do it? No, that's the problem. I don't want to sell a beauty product. But a health product? Hmm, actually, I'm kind of interested in that. Keeping healthy. Turn the twist. How do you spin it? Cool. Let's, uh, have you all got an idea? Have you, have you got a niche? Yes? Have you got roughly a product category? As soon as you have, what I'd like you to do is just stick it in the discussion area on present. Right in there, what is it that you are going to be doing? What's your market, your product category? Just put in there, let's share, let's collaborate. Because you might have said, oh, yeah, I should have done that. Because you're going to start inspiring each other. Say, so they might steal my market. Yeah, you might not do your market, but you might find, well, perhaps we should work together. There's something in it. And everybody in here could very easily team up with somebody else in order to create a better product. Okay? Shall we take a Coffee break? Sure. Because we started a bit late, but I, I'm keen that you get a cup of coffee. Let's take a coffee break now. Um, Haven't got some facilities here, but there's also a Mook Cafe downstairs. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Dimbala is is down the street. There's Gloria Jeans here. There's a yep. Starbucks. Starbucks. Okay, so they're all within a short walking distance. I'm not sure what the weather's actually doing right now. Let's, um, let's take, we're going to take half an hour in total. So go down, grab your cup of coffee, uh, whatever snacks you need, and we'll be back here and we're going to start again at quarter past 11. All right? Do you want some questions and answers um, before? And uh, let's, let's <coughs> consolidate the questions and then I'll answer them when we come back. so that everyone gets a chance to put their questions in. What I would really, really like you to do is put the questions into the present. Okay? Is this going in the discussion area? Uh, this answer is going in discussion area, questions in the question. Question in the question. And if you put it in the wrong area, just tell me where it is, because I'm, I'm just trying to juggle things here. So let's take a coffee break.